Amen, amen, amen. Uh, on the battlefield for my Lord. That is a that is a favorite here at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. I'd like to welcome you this morning, all of you that are listening, and whether you're listening uh, live or doing our Facebook live broadcast, or whether you'll see this on a delayed basis. God bless you and a wonderful good morning to you. Beautiful morning outside today. I feel a little bit of a, a fall nip in the air when I came out this morning. It feels wonderful to me. We thank God for such a beautiful day. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Now, whether it's a sunshiny day or a rainy day outside, we're still going to rejoice and be glad in it because this is the day that God has made. Again, welcome to those of you who may be uh, joining us. If you're a visitor to our church or to our uh, website, to our message, we thank you for joining us and we encourage you to continue to join. I'll also ask those of you who are members of Mount Moriah that if you are blessed by our service, if you're blessed by our message, to share the message on your Facebook page uh, and on your YouTube channel. If you will look at the, uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, make sure you subscribe uh, to the channel. Also, we encourage you to uh, leave your comments and leave your messages. And as again, I said, make sure you share it with others in your contact and your list of contacts, your friends, uh, because if it's blessed, if it's, you've been blessed by it, there's a good possibility that others will be blessed also. Amen. Amen. We also want to thank those of you who have been faithful in your giving, uh, faithful in your tithing, faithful in your offering. We're not meeting in person, but we thank you that God has uh, continued to bless our church, but we do need our members to continue to be faithful in that area. And if you're not a member, but God is leading you to share with a ministry, you can go to our website, uh, mountmariahauburn.com, and there you'll find a place where you may donate if you're not already uh, a member of or a permanent part of a church home or a church family, uh, and you feel that God is leading you to tithe, go to our website, mountmariahauburn.com, and there you'll find uh, the GiveLify app, and you can give uh, your tithes and your offerings there uh, if you're not currently a part of another church. I want to just make one very quick announcement and then we're going to go to the word. Uh, we know that November 3rd is one of the most important days in the history of our country. Uh, we are voting uh, again on November 3rd in a presidential election. Uh, I'm not here to talk politics this morning, but I just want to talk what is our social and civic uh, responsibility. First of all, I want to encourage everyone to vote, regardless of what your, uh, your, uh, your sympathies are, regardless of what your views are. Right. It's important. Uh, many people have given their life over a long period of time just so that we would have the option and the right to vote. Amen. Now, if you are concerned about the COVID-19 or if you're not well or if you don't feel that you can stand in long lines because the lines may be very long this year, right. you do have the option in the state of Alabama of applying for an absentee ballot. Mm. Even if you're taking care, you're a caretaker of someone, you cannot leave them alone you can still apply for an absentee ballot. The ballot will be mailed to you once you're approved and you can then send the ballot back in. You have to apply for the ballot first, mm -hmm. the ballot is then sent to you and you send, send the ballot back into the registrar's office. There's no excuse uh, uh, this year uh, that none of us can vote. Even though you may not stand in line or be concerned about COVID-19 uh, in a large area, you can still vote by absentee ba ballot in the state of Alabama. Now, I have some of those absentee uh, ballot applications. If you'd like to call me or text me, I'll be happy to get you one, mm -hmm. or you may come by the church and pick up one. All right. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now for another opportunity to stand before your people and to expound on your word. We thank you, God, that you have blessed us with a wonderful and beautiful day. And God, we thank you that, you that you have protected us from hurt, harm, and danger, from sickness, illness, and disease. For those who are suffering, Lord, and struggling in our community and even around this country, we ask, oh God, for your mercy, your grace to rest upon them, and that your hand of healing would be upon them also. Now, Lord, as we share your word, we ask that you prepare the hearts, the minds, 
especially the spirits of those of us who were here, that your word might fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit as you see fit. It's in the name of our Christ. We know him as Jesus. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. I want to ask you to go with us this morning in the word uh, to the book of Joshua. If you've been with us, you know that we are preaching through the book of Joshua. Again, today we are in the uh, Joshua chapter 10. This is the sixth message in our Joshua series, and this is the third message from Joshua chapter 10. Very interesting chapter. A lot of things are going on here. Some of you may say, well, pastor, we're only in chapter 10 and you've already preached uh, 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 six messages. Well, uh, you're going to find out as we go on that uh, we'll probably be able to move a little bit faster because of the way the chapter is laid out. Today we're looking at chapter 10, chapter 10, and we're, uh, we're going to uh, read just one verse there, verse 25, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. If you are able to stand physically, uh, I'm going to ask that you stand in honor of God's word wherever you are. Joshua chapter 10, verse 25, reading from the NIV uh, version, these words are here written. Joshua said to them, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, be strong, and be courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Joshua said, listen, let's unpack this verse. There's a, there, there's a lot of meat on this bone. Joshua said, number one, do not be afraid. Secondly, do not be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, be strong. And finally, be courageous. All right. I want to talk to you from this thought for just a few moments this morning. Outfitted for the fight. All right. Outfitted for the fight. If you've been with us on our previous messages uh, in, the, uh, in the book of Joshua, you know that there's been a whole lot going on. Uh, toward the beginning of Joshua, we know that Moses has passed away and Joshua has taken over the leadership. And then God does some amazing miracles for the people of Israel, for his people. We know that the, the first miracle that they did, even before they got into the promised land, was that God dried up uh, the Jericho River and they went across uh, on dry ground. Uh, we know that after they got across the Jordan River, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that the city of Jericho, uh, God uh, brought that particular uh, city, that powerful, powerful city, uh, he brought defeat upon it at the hands of his people Israel. So God has got tremendous miracles going on here. We also know that the battle, uh, after he was deceived, uh, the battle at Ai, mm -hmm. they brought victory again there. God is working in his people. And finally, on last week, we talked about probably one of the most amazing miracles in Scripture, that during the battle, the battle of Gibeon, Joshua actually prayed to God and asked the sun to stand still. Mm. He said, God, I don't have enough sunlight left mm. to finish this battle. God, I need you to give me some more daylight. And the Bible says, in our message on last week, that the sun stood still for an entire day so that Joshua and the people of Israel could complete the battle and defeat the armies of those who had come against them in Canaan. Amen. Well, that brings us up to where we are today. We found out on last week that uh, five kings in the land of Canaan, five kings had brought their armies together. Rather than having to, choosing to fight Israel, uh, one army at a time, five of the kings in the land of Canaan came together and they were going to attack Israel at the same time. Now, this really worked out in God's favor and in Israel's favor because now Joshua would not have to fight each of them separately. All right. He could defeat all of them at one time. Amen. The word tells us that the city, the, the, the Gibeon, the Gibeonites had uh, gone to Joshua and they had... Uh, 
became, signed a peace treaty with Joshua and the people of Israel. And when the other five kings in the land of Canaan heard about it, they wanted to attack Gibeon. Mm -hmm. Joshua and his army marched all night long. They went to the battle early the next morning. Yeah. They defeated the five armies that had come against them. But when we come up to today's message, here's a question that comes up to us. What happened to the five kings that had gathered their armies together? Mm. Israel had been promised by God that Canaan was theirs. Israel had been promised, going all the way back uh, to the patriarch Abraham, that the land of Canaan was theirs. It was what God called the promised land. But here's an interesting fact, my brothers and sisters, is that just because God had promised the land to Israel, it did not mean that they would not have to fight in order to possess it. God had given them the land. He had promised them victory, but they still had to fight in order to possess their possession. Amen. That reminds me of our Christian walk today. God has brought us into the promised land of salvation. He has brought us into the, to the promised land of eternal uh, life uh, in the presence of God. But that does not mean that because we have been prom are in the promised land, that does not mean that we won't have to fight our way in this battle of life while we're here on this earth. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that while Joshua and his armies were mopping up from the battle of of, of the Gibeonites, that those five kings, those that were, had brought those armies together, those five kings got together and went in hiding. Now their armies were still out on the battlefield, but they saw that the battle was not going well. So these five kings, read it in chapter 10, you'll find out. They got together and they said, they went into hiding. The Bible says that during the skirmish, the skirmish they hid themselves in a cave. Mm -hmm. Joshua, after the battle was over, found out that the kings were hiding in a cave together. All right. And he instructed his men to put large stones in front of the entrance to the cave mm -hmm. so that the kings could not get out. There were a few more people, a few more of the soldiers of the five cities that they had to, had to finish off. But the kings got together and they were hidden together in the cave. The stones were there so they could not get out. But once the full battle was over, Joshua went back to address the kings that had sent their armies out against them. All right. The Bible says that he had the kings brought out of the cave. And he put them in front of the armies of Israel. He humiliated them in front of the armies of Israel. Israel was shown that these kings who had come against God yeah. could not stand against the armies of the living God. Mm. And I want to let somebody know today that no matter what it is you're going through, the enemy cannot stand against you That's right. as long as you're in God's favor. The enemy will not defeat you mm. as long as you're practicing and following the guidelines that God has laid out for us. Mm -hmm. Joshua had told the people that they needed to be faithful and they needed to believe that God was on their side. When we get to verse 25 of our text today, we hear the words of Joshua spoken to his men. We hear the words that Joshua is giving to them. We see the outfit that he's giving them for the fight. Because you see, just because Joshua and the armies of Israel had defeated those five kings, had defeated those five cities, there were still many more battles to fight. There were still many enemies to conquer. There was still a lot of fighting ahead of them. So Joshua wanted them to know that we're not done yet. And I want you to know too, my friends, my brothers and my sisters, that as long as you're alive here on this earth, as long as God puts breath in your body, every day will be a fight. Yeah. Every day will be a struggle against yeah. the enemy. Every day we have to continue to fight because the enemy is one who will not quit. Joshua was letting them know that you must be equipped for this fight. Look at verse 25, and this is where our text is today. Joshua is speaking now to his army. But I want you to fast forward to 2020. Joshua is speaking to us 
as warriors on the battlefield for God. Joshua in this text was speaking to his army. Mm -hmm. He wanted them to understand that we have gained victory now but we must continue to fight. We must continue to struggle. We must continue to work. That's the word I want to leave with you today. You must continue to outfit yourself for the fight. Amen. Because the enemy will not stop. Joshua said to them, them being those his soldiers. Yes, we've gained defeat, but there's a lot of battles ahead of us. He says in the beginning of this verse, number one, he says, fear not. All right. Do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, someone, uh, some Bible, great theologian, uh, went through the Bible and counted the number of times that the words fear not are in the text All of the right. scriptures. All right. Believe it or not, my brothers and my sisters, fear not is in the Bible 365 times. Amen. One for every day of the year. Fear not. Joshua wants them to know that we don't need to be apprehensive about standing up to what we know is evil. We know that the enemy is powerful. The enemies that came against Joshua and Israel were powerful enemies. But God wanted them to know that you don't have to be afraid as you fight the enemy. You fight the enemy based on the strength that God has given you. You do not have to be afraid. Don't be afraid to speak truth to power. Don't be afraid to stand up against that which you know is wrong. In this Christian race, Joshua told them, first of all, don't be afraid. That's the word that Joshua is leaving with us today in this age of COVID-19, in this age of the era of Donald Trump and the presidency. There's so much going on and there's things that are happening every day that it seems that we have no control over. But the word of God is telling us, don't be afraid. Fear not. Paul, when he was writing to his young son, Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Yeah. I don't have to worry about the things that are in this world to the point where I fear them. Joshua told his men, as I'm telling you today, as the word of God is speaking to all of us, don't be afraid of what is ahead of you. Amen. Fear not. God's got this thing under control. Yeah. I know it may look like it's out of control. I, may, I know it may look like everything is going to hell in a handbasket, uh -huh. but don't be afraid. All right. David, when he was writing that wonderful psalm that we call the 23rd Psalm, he says, Yea, though I walk, through the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. I will fear no evil. Mm -hmm. Those are words that we can say today as I go through this era of COVID-19. Right. As I go through this era when it seems that the very civil liberties of our country are being eroded. When it seems that there are those who are in power that want to take on uh, the position of a demagogue and rule and control and take away personal freedoms. I will not be afraid. Yea, though I walk through the valley of 2020, I will not be afraid. All right. That's our first outfit for the fight. Joshua said, fear not. God's got this thing under control. But then he said, he goes on. He says, and do not be discouraged. Joshua knows that he's fighting to strong men. He's fighting, he's talking rather to strong men. He's not talking to cowards. He's talking to battle-worn soldiers. But he also knows that the possibility of discouragement is there for all of us. He says, don't be discouraged. Don't let, the, let me put it this way, my brothers and sisters. Don't let the devil get you down. When you try to do the best you can do, and the best that you can do does not seem to be enough, don't give up. God has promised victory to us as believers in Christ just as he had promised victory to those people of Israel Amen. during the time of Joshua. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says this, we are more than conquerors. Yeah. It might be one thing to say we, we're going to win, but the Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors That's right. through him that loved us. 
Joshua wanted the people to know that discouragement is very possible even to the believer. It's easy for us to become discouraged when we look around at sometimes at how the world is seems to be headed in a bad and the wrong direction. But I want you to know something, my, my brothers and sisters. Satan may know that he can't take your salvation away, but he also does know that he can take your joy away. He can discourage us to the point that we sometimes feel like we want to give up. That's right. I'm reminded of David in that 51st Psalm after his sin had been found out. The prophet came to him and told him that you're the man. David went before God and he was saddened in his spirit because of his sin. And when he sat down to write Psalm 51, when he gets down to verse 12, he asked God to restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Yeah. David realized that he had not lost his salvation as a result of his sin. We do not lose our salvation once we have accepted Jesus Christ. Mm. However, sin in our lives can steal our joy. Right. Sin in our lives can produce discouragement. One of the outfits that we need for the fight is joy. We need our joy because yeah. Nehemiah, the, the prophet Ezra said in the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 that the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's right. That's right. I see Christians, born again believers, Holy Ghost filled Christians that are not enjoying this Christian walk because of discouragement because of a lack of joy. But Joshua wanted his soldiers, his battle hardened soldiers, to first of all, fear not. Don't be afraid. But then secondly, don't be discouraged. All right. That's a word for us today. Fight discouragement with the joy of the Lord. David, I love him. He, he was a great, great warrior, but he also knew how to praise God. Mm. He praised God from the pasture when he was tending his father's sheep all the way to the palace as the king of Israel. So my point to you, my brothers and sisters, is that when discouragement sets in, when it looks like you're just not going to be able to make it, when it looks like you want to give up, don't be discouraged. You need that outfit for this fight. That's right. But then thirdly, Joshua goes on and he simply speaks one simple sentence. He says, be strong. He says, fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. And be strong. That's right. That's right. I think the Apostle Paul said it well when he was penning, uh, penning the letter, letter to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 10, 6 verse 10, he says, finally, my brethren, mm -hmm. I told you, as much as I can tell you, but finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. That's right. I want you to know that you will never be strong enough to fight the enemy on your own willpower. Mm -hmm. You will never be strong enough to fight the enemy just because you want to. Mm -hmm. The only way that we have strength is that we have strength in the power of the Lord. We've got God on our side. When you've done all you can to stand, what are you going to do? I'm just going to stand. Yeah. I'm going to stand in the power and the power and the presence of God and his Holy Spirit. He says, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't be discouraged, mm -hmm. but be strong. That's, right. That's a word to you today, my friends, my brothers and my sisters. Some of you are going through some things right now. I'm going through things in my own life. I have to continue to remind myself that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the Lord. Amen. Joshua is preaching to his men, preaching to his soldiers, preaching to those who he know will have to fight again tomorrow. There'll be another enemy on down the road as they go into Canaan. There will be other enemies that they will have to fight, but don't be afraid, don't be discouraged, be strong. Amen. And then finally, he tells them, he says, be courageous. Nothing hurts my feelings a whole lot more than to see Christians. I'm talking about born-again believers who seem to be sometimes afraid of the fight. They seem to have gotten to the point that they, just, they don't want to be a part of the struggle anymore. Mm -hmm. well, I want you to know that Joshua is letting his, 
his men know and he's speaking to us today to let us know that sometimes we have to take the fight to the enemy. God had given them the promised land, but they still had to fight once they got there. They had to fight all of the others that were in the promised land who were coming against them. God has given us the promised land, and we still have to fight. Be courageous. And we can be courageous because we already know the outcome of the battle. God had promised Israel, the land is yours. Just go in and fight. And one of the things that when I look back at the scriptures and I wonder, God, why did you tell your people to when they went into the land to destroy everybody there? He, he said, I don't want you to leave any of them alive. I want you to take all of them out because God knew, as we know today, that sin always has a way of seeping in. And if you allow sin to stay, if you allow sin to be a part of your life, a part of your church, a part of your organization, sooner or later, a little bit of sin is going to cause a whole lot of problems. Amen. So Joshua wanted them to know that I, God wanted Joshua rather to know that I want you to wipe all of them out. So Joshua was saying, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Be strong. And be courageous. Well, as I said, that there are many battles ahead of Israel in this book of Joshua and throughout the scriptures. There are many battles that are ahead for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we look last week at the sun standing still. Uh, the interesting thing is that that is the final miracle that is in the book of Joshua. That is the last miracle that God performs is right here in chapter 10 and we've got twice that many chapters left to go. There won't be any other miracles but there will be great victories. Yeah. You may not see a miracle in your life. You may not know and remember a miracle that God has performed for you in your life. But I want you to know that God is still with you, just like he was still with Israel. Even though there weren't great miracles that they saw on a daily basis, God still gave them victory over their enemies. Yeah. We've got a warfare ahead of us. Yes. We've got things that we have to deal with every single day. Mm -hmm. Joshua's words to his soldiers are the same words that we need to hear today. Amen. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Be strong and be courageous. Yeah. I'm just glad that God didn't put us in this battle without giving us the weapons that we need for our warfare. That's right. If I go to the apostle Paul, Paul tells us, in the book of Ephesians, he said, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against all of the wiles of the devil. For you fight not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Right. Against the mighty powers and against evil spirits in high places. But he didn't leave us out there naked. We still got a way that we can fight and be outfitted for the fight. Paul tells us in the book of Ephesians, he said, have your loins girt about with truth. That's right. This is what the army of God is in this day and in this age. Have your loins girt about with, the, with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Take up the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. And of course, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. We need every one of these things to be outfitted for the battle that is ahead of us. I want you to know today, my brothers and my sisters, that God has a victory ahead of you. Yeah. There are many things that you're going to have to struggle with as you get through this life. But don't give up. Mm -hmm. Don't throw in the towel. God is still God and he's still in control. Yeah. Israel was successful because God was always on their side. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that if you're a born again believer, yeah. that God is always on your side. Uh -huh. Even when you've made mistakes, uh, even when you've struggled and, and committed even sin in your life, God is still a God <laughs> that is on your side. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah today. Yeah. We need to be outfitted for the fight. That's right. We need to be ready because just like Israel, we have to fight every single day. The song that we started this morning was, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Mm -hmm. 
But any good soldier knows that you don't go into a battle without being properly outfitted. The words that Joshua gave to his soldiers are the words that we can hear today. As I get ready to leave you and listen one more time, whatever it is you're going through in life, don't be afraid. God has not given you the spirit of fear. It may be illness, it may be financial difficulties, it may be struggles in your life, struggles in your church, struggles in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't be discouraged. Be strong and be courageous. God is still in control. Jesus died for my sins and yours. And as he hung on Calvary, he said, it is finished. He wasn't talking about his mortal life because we know that God would raise him from the dead. He was simply saying that everything you need for the battle, every outfit that you need has been provided to you, has been supplied to us through your spirit. Beloved, listen to me today. I'll say it one more time. We all have to fight in this battle. This Christian walk is a struggle. God never told you it was going to be easy. He never promised you a rose garden of ease. He simply said that I'll be with you through the struggle. But we need to outfit ourselves. We need to be prepared for the battle that we'll struggle through on tomorrow. Amen. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Be strong. Be courageous. Is my prayer for you today. Pray with me, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you for his death and his sacrifice on Calvary's Hill. I thank you, God, that he dropped his head and the rock through his shoulders and he died. They put him in a borrowed tomb, but I'm so glad he did not stay there. Father, thank you for raising Jesus by the power of your spirit. And I thank you that Jesus is alive today, seated at the right hand of the Father on the throne in heaven. And even today, he prays for us. He prays for me. He prays for every heart that is listening today. And he's telling us, I've got this. Trust me. The battle is yours. The victory is ours. Now, Father, if there's someone who does not know you as Savior, Convict them and draw them to you. Make them a child of yours, Lord, through the leading and guidance of your Holy Spirit. If there's one who has fallen away, God, I ask you that you'll draw them back to you. And we ask these things in the name of our Savior, our Christ. We know him as Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. Until we meet again. Take care.